Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to compare rational numbers using a number line. So we will take a look at some basic comparisons and we will use number lines to help us determine greater than, less than, or equal to. Now remember, when it comes to number lines, if we look at zero, Positive numbers are to the right of zero, and negative numbers are to the left of zero. And keep in mind, as far as moving along a number line, numbers increase in value as we move to the right, and decrease in value as we move to the left. So when we compare rational numbers using a number line, the number further to the right on the number line will be greater in value. Let's jump into number one, where we have a very simple comparison. Is two greater than, less than, or equal to four? Well, obviously two is less than four, but I wanted to start very simple because we're going to build off of this, and this leads into number two, where we have negatives. So as far as the number line, two is right here, and four, is right here. Four is greater than two. It's further right on the number line. So two is less than four. Let's move on to number two where we have negative two is greater than, less than, or equal to negative four. Well, negative two is right here on the number line, and negative four is right here. So which number is further to the right and therefore greater in value? Well, negative two. Negative two is greater than negative four. At first glance, negative four may seem greater because four is greater than two, but we have to think we are working with negatives here. Negative two is further right on the number line. It's greater in value. So negative two is greater than negative four. Moving on to number three, we have six and three fourths is greater than, less than, or equal to six and five tenths. So we have a number in fractional form and a number in decimal form. Remember, fractions can be written as decimals and decimals can be written as fractions. So when we compare rational numbers, it's always a good idea to have the numbers in the same form. So either both in fractional form or both in decimal form. This will make it easier to compare. For number three, let's put six and five tenths in fractional form. Six and five tenths is six and a half. Anytime you have 0.5, five tenths, that's a half. And that always works out to be a half because 0.5, 5 tenths in fractional form is 5 over 10, which we can simplify. The greatest common factor between 5 and 10 is 5. So let's divide our numerator and denominator by 5 in order to simplify. 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 10 divided by 5 is 2. So 5 tenths, 0.5, equals 1 half. Now, as far as the number line, both of these numbers are between six and seven. Let's start with six and three fourths. This is six and one fourth, six and two fourths, which is six and a half, and then six and three fourths. So six and three fourths is right here. And then we have six and five tenths, which is six and a half. That's right here and I'll write the original decimal form. So we can see that six and three fourths is further to the right on the number line, therefore greater in value. So six and three fourths is greater than six and five tenths. Next, let's move on to number four. We have three is greater than, less than, or equal to 17 fifths. Three is right here on the number line. And then 17 fifths, 17 over five, that's an improper fraction. So we need to convert it to a mixed number. That will make this much simpler to put on the number line and compare. So to convert this to a mixed number, 
let's do it underneath here. We need to divide the numerator, 17, by the denominator, 5. So how many whole groups of 5 in 17? Well, 3. That's going to be the whole number of our mixed number. That gets us to 15. So we have a remainder of 2. That's the numerator of the fractional part. And then we keep the denominator of 5 the same. So 17 fifths equals 3 and 2 fifths as a mixed number. 3 and 2 fifths is greater than 3, but less than 3 and a half. 3 and 2 fifths is about right here. And I'll write the original improper fraction. So 3 and 2 fifths, 17 fifths, is greater than 3. It's further right on the number line. So looking at the comparison, 3 is less than 17 fifths. Moving on to number 5, we have negative 25 hundredths is greater than, less than, or equal to 9 tenths. Now here, we are comparing a negative to a positive. So the positive is automatically going to be greater. But let's put these on the number line to show that. And remember, it's helpful to have both numbers in the same form. So let's do decimal form for this one. 9 tenths in fractional form, so 9 over 10, is written like this in decimal form. As far as the number line, negative 25 hundredths is going to be to the left of 0. It's negative. And in between 0 and negative 5 tenths, negative 1 half. Now, negative 25 hundredths is negative 1 fourth. So it is about right here, right in between 0 and negative 5 tenths. So negative 25 hundredths, which again is negative 1 fourth. And then 9 tenths is to the right of 0 and in between 5 tenths and 1. 9 tenths is pretty close to 1. It's only 1 tenth away. So let's put 9 tenths right here, and I'll write it in the original fractional form. So we can see that 9 tenths is further right on the number line, and therefore greater in value. So as far as the comparison, negative 25 hundredths is less than 9 tenths. Lastly, let's move on to number six, where we have negative eight and seven tenths is greater than, less than, or equal to negative eight and 85 hundredths. Now, both of these numbers are in between negative eight and negative nine. As far as the number line, negative eight and seven tenths will be, well, we have negative eight and one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, 5 tenths, which is negative 8 and a half, 6 tenths, and 7 tenths. So negative 8 and 7 tenths is right here. And then negative 8 and 85 hundredths, this will be right in between negative 8 and 8 tenths and negative 8 and 9 tenths. Negative 8 and 8 tenths is right here and negative eight and nine tenths is right here. And if we write a zero in the hundredths place for both of these, so hundredths place, and remember, we can write zeros to the right of a decimal. That doesn't change the value, so these are equivalent. And that will help us place eight and 85 hundredths because that goes to the hundredths place. And now those decimals do as well. And we know that 85 is in between 80 and 90. So negative eight and 85 hundredths is about right here. Negative eight and seven tenths is further to the right on the number line it's greater in value. So negative eight and seven tenths is greater than negative eight and 85 hundredths. So there you have it. There's how to compare rational numbers using a number line. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.